what does it mean for a loudspeaker to be transparent? I've been thinking about that question quite a lot this last two weeks since I took receipt of the Golden Ear BRX stand mount. BRX is bookshelf reference X, I don't know. Now apparently this loudspeaker has many components pulled from the Triton reference floor standing loudspeaker, so a much more expensive model. And that includes the folded ribbon tweeter, which is rated, I believe, all the way up to 35 kilohertz. Not that we can hear that high. And then at the bottom end, this speaker is rated by the manufacturer down to 40 hertz. So that means we don't get the the bottom octave that we might get from the Key 3 or the JBL L100 Classic. Now that 40 hertz comes from this mid bass driver, which was also pulled from the Triton reference. But instead of a port, because if you look at the back of this speaker, no port. Instead of that, we have two side firing passive radiators, which work in a similar way to a port, but they've become quite fashionable recently there's an article on my website that went up just, yeah, just this week about loudspeaker designers using passive radiators instead of ports more frequently than before. And they're generally used to sidestep the issue of port chuffing. That's the sound the port makes when it expels air. And that can lead to a cleanup in the mid range. And the other advantage of having a passive radiator system is you the way I understand it is that you get better room coupling. Now the BRX's internals also have been borrowed from the Triton reference. So same crossover, same wiring, same internal damping materials. And I think that's because designer Sandy Gross wanted to voice them in a similar way to that Triton reference floor stander. And the BRX in my world have a much nicer fit and finish than the Eon 2 and Eon 3 stand mount that Golden Ear also produce. I reviewed those way back in 2013 and 14. They had this kind of um, sock around them, like it's a, an acoustically transparent material that sort of wrapped around the cabinet, which was okay and it was appropriate for the price point. But the piano black on these, I'm not normally a fan of piano black, but it, it looks really smart. I mean, with the grills on, this looks like a proper Darth Vader of a speaker. Another interesting feature of this loudspeaker is its rated efficiency at 90 dB, which is kind of on the high side for a stand mount. And I thought that meant I could then use the shit Azure amp to power these. But no, bass control just isn't there and they sound a bit ragged from the Azure's 25 watts, 20 watts. Like it's, it's a pretty meager amount of watts, which is normally fine for a clip speaker as we have seen recently. But for these, not at all. I then cut over to the MyTech Brooklyn amp, which is a much, much, much better match. And not just in the control of the bottom end, and not just in its sort of squeegee cleanliness that I've spoken about before, in the sort of delicacy and the finesse that comes from this folded ribbon tweeter, this is where the, the MyTech amp really sort of steps forward. It manages to extract the best delicacy and finesse from this HVFR, tweeter HVFR, yeah. So yeah, the MyTech was better. And I also was using the Hegel H390 amp and then using it as a pre into the MyTech Brooklyn amp in case you were wondering. So yeah, the H390 is also a very good fit for these. Possibly the best fit of the three, but it's a much closer call between the H390 running alone and the Brooklyn amp than it was with the JBLs and the Klipsch and the ELAC video I made a few weeks ago. So don't be afraid of Class D with these loudspeakers and you'll see why in a moment. Um, just make sure you give them enough power. I think the tweeter really does call for that. So how do they sound with my favorite amps? Well, in my notes, I wrote they've got a soundstage as high as a horse, and that soundstage is as deep as Brian Blessed's voice. 
And I stand by those statements, even if they are a little bit humorous. But yeah, so these speakers sound very big um, in terms of their soundstage, very spacious and very specific with player placement, you know, putting a guitar over here, drums over here. Um, very holographic, we might call that. So they really play to the brain in, you know, in what we get from the loudspeaker. So they are kind of like the opposite of what some people, not me, might call musical. They're very sort of precise and clean, a bit like going to a planetarium and watching a presentation in there. Another killer feature of these speakers is their speed. Their ability to sort of snap and turn on a dime when dynamics call for it is really impressive. And in that respect, they recall the Klipsch RP600M. So I thought that was really interesting. But perhaps this loudspeaker's standout quality is transparency in the mid-range. And I'm using this transparency word deliberately because the enunciation of vocals um, with music and also with TV programs, Netflix and streaming and that kind of thing, was really, it was, is really exceptional. Sorry, I was just thinking back to something I was watching the other night and thinking, yeah, wow, I can really hear the dialogue extremely clearly. And that's really important for me if I'm watching a German TV show with English subtitles and I'm trying to work out how the subtitles relate to the German language. So. This is not just a hi-fi system loudspeaker. It's probably a pretty good fit for a home theater, I would think. But anyway, this is, this is where I come to this, this idea of transparency, because we get the, the notion of transparency as a feeling. We feel like we're hearing deeper into the music, deeper into the dialogue. But for me, transparency doesn't relate to sort of hearing the, the original recording, because we can't know that, or being in this studio, because we weren't there. My thinking in calling this a transparent speaker stems from two other qualities, and they are being able to really pick the differences between two DACs with this speaker in play. Because whilst I was doing this review, I'm also reviewing a streaming DAC, and I'm comparing it to a DAC inside an amplifier. And these speakers really help me sort of tease out the differences, but also, the BRX make the recent remaster of REM's country feedback sound enormous and very strong and very present. But equally, when I pulled up the Wedding Presents Brass Neck, the original master, it sounded small and boxed in and a bit puny and diluted and far away. So in that respect, the BRX allow us to hear big differences between mastering quality. And again, I think that's another indication of what I call transparency. So I wanna be clear about this, that my version of transparency might not be the same as somebody else's. So I'm saying difference between DACs or difference between sources being teased out cleanly is one way of looking at transparency. And related to that, yeah, differences between the quality of mastering is another way to consider how transparent a hi-fi system is. So I've already said quite a bit about the BRX's sound from my perspective. The problem is when you do that in isolation, it can come across as though you could be describing any loudspeaker or a very broad range of loudspeakers. So to get more specific with the BRX's sound, I compared it to the KEF LS50, which as many viewers will know, is possibly the gold standard of stand mount loudspeakers at about 1500 bucks, which is where the BRX come in. So similar price, similar size, um, different driver array though, because the, the KEF uses the UniQ, so coaxial and coincidentally aligned drivers, whereas your golden ear is more of a traditional sort of two-way, even though it has the ribbon tweeter, which I think is the, 
the reason behind its sort of sense of transparency and clarity. So we already know that the BRX are very good at drawing out a soundstage and therefore disappearing. So one quality that I love from, from the KEF is their ability to vanish. Now, for those of you who don't really know what I'm talking about here, that's where you have two speakers set up, you're playing music, and it's as if the music exists independently of the speakers. It's not sort of tied to the left and right channels. We get a nice sound stage sort of floating in the middle, and we get that from both these speakers. So the BRX is just as good as the KEF when it comes to imaging and disappearing. The next thing I'd say is that the KEF, because they've got a rear firing port, can't go as close to the front wall as the BRX can because they have those side firing passive radiators. That said, the KEF are a lot easier to sort of position and get a nice soundstage, a nice presentation than the BRX. I really had to mess around with the, the towing on these quite a bit. So that sort of made me realize or understand that it's much easier to find a broader sweet spot with the KEF than it is with the BRX. But when you get the BRX right, bingo. But you really have to mess around with positioning. And I think the sweet spot is probably a little bit narrower with the, with the Golden Ear than with the KEF. Maybe, I think. Now you can see the two speakers here on Atacama stands. These are 60 centimeter stands. Unfortunately, well not unfortunately, but yeah, quirkily, unfortunately, Golden Ear recommends that you use 70 stands for their BRX. Now, why is that? Well, I don't have 70 centimeter stands, but I did manage to whack some books under these stands to lift the BRX to have a listen. And you get a much smoother presentation when they're up 10 centimeters. So I was listening to some Howie Gelb. Howie Gelb is the guy from Giant Sand, the lead singer of Giant Sand, but he's made a few albums that are sort of like loungy jazz music. And the sort of cymbal shimmer is a lot less in your face when the speakers are a bit higher. When they're lower, they tend to come at you a little bit more. Now, I wouldn't necessarily say that's a bad thing. I quite like a keen upper mid-range, and if you're used to the Klipsch RP600M, or any Klipsch really, you won't necessarily object to having the BRX on 60 centimeter stands, because they, you know, they jump at you, the, the upper mid really comes at you, and it's nice. Not nice, that's not the right word. It's exciting is what it is. It's, it makes music sound more exciting. So you have options as, as to whether you want that sort of smoother pipe and slippers type approach, or you want a more exciting listen. Choice is yours. Now when I cut over to John Tejada's The Predicting Machine, I realized something quite important, I think actually, is that with the Golden Ear, they go lower, but they don't have the forward push and heft that the KEF give us. Whereas the KEF don't go quite as low as the Golden Ear, but do have that forward shove. So if you're an electronic music fan, you might really enjoy the sort of crystalline clarity of the mid-range, but you might find the bass, yeah, it's deep, but if you like to sort of really sort of feel it come at you, Maybe the KEF is the better choice in that respect. So when I want to test for airiness in the treble, the sort of treble sparkle, I always play Sif Jan Stevens' Illinois album. Come on, feel the Illinois. Um, and listening to that through both these speakers, I concluded that the BRX are the more overtly airy of the two. They have a bit more sparkle up top. But then I cut over to Spiritualized Feel So Sad EP from way back, from 91, I think, um, which has lots of very slow vocals. It's kind of morose, lots of strings. And that told me that the KEF are slightly richer in the mid-range. Just a bit, not a huge amount. These are not big differences, they're small differences. 
So when it comes to dynamics, I think the BRX are possibly the more exciting listen, just. And that really comes from a better, more exciting handling of micro dynamics. That's the smaller shifts. So the sort of the twitches and the flickers and I guess, how would I relate that to music? Um, Talk Talk's Color of Spring. The first track is full of um, lots of punchy percussion. And I think that pops a little bit more, a little bit more vibrantly through the golden ear than it does through the kef. So that makes for a more exciting listen. And if you're picking up what I'm putting down here, excitement, transparency, big sound stage. Really, where I got to at the end of this review was seeing the, these golden ear loudspeakers as a more refined, a more transparent, but equally dynamic loudspeaker um, as the Klipsch RP600M. So if you like the Klipsch and you want more, you might want to look at the golden ear because it definitely gives you a lot more, really. Um, yeah. One of the downsides of doing A-B comparisons like this is that people want to know more. So the more I give, the more people want. So please understand that I've gone through the KEF versus the BRX comparison very thoroughly, as best as I can do. And everything that I have learnt is in this video. There is no more for me to give. Another downside is that people often, when faced with an AB comparison like this, they want to, they want to see a winner. And as is often the case when you're comparing similarly priced products, there is no winner. There's no winner in this case. I cannot tell you that the Kef is emphatically the better speaker, and I cannot tell you that the Golden Ear is emphatically the better speaker. They both have strengths and weaknesses. As far as the BRX goes, very strong on a perception, a feeling of transparency, of soundstage size, of image specificity. So the reason that this video is very much a tale of two speakers is to isolate the performance of one speaker. That's the BRX, that's the golden ear. And if you dig the fact that I do comparisons between similarly priced bits of hi-fi gear, then hit that subscribe button, click that bell, and as always, thank you so much for watching. This might be a question that people outside of the USA ask when reading or hearing about hearing it. Blah, blah, blah. Let me start this again. Sorry. It allows Sandy. No, no. Let me do that bit again. Sorry. Let me start that bit again. So we already know that the BRX are very good at imaging. Oh, oh, oh. You need to start that again. Oh, my goodness. Oh, God. Okay. Go ahead. And it goes all the way up to 35 hertz. No, that's not true. It goes all the way up to 35 kilohertz. <laughs> so let me start that bit again. Oh my God! I'm... Do you want me to? You you want to move? No, no, no. Okay, okay, That's okay, good. okay. Uh, okay, okay. Are we good?